SOLIDWORKS Sustainability is an incredibly powerful tool inside of SOLIDWORKS that enables us to gain insight into our design and its environmental impact. More importantly, it provides us with a very efficient way of evaluating design changes to minimize the impact on our design and its impact on the environment. It's also advantageous to do this early in the design cycle as this has a larger impact on reducing time and costs. In this particular example, we're focusing on a personal humidifier. We want to see if we can implement changes to improve the environmental impact. Let's talk about the breakdown of the environmental factors just in a moment. But as you can see on this slide, uh, SOLIDWORKS Sustainability is one of the legs of the portfolio solutions that CapInc offers for the SOLIDWORKS product line. We're also going to talk about how you can integrate SOLIDWORKS Simulation in the sustainable design practices of your company. So why do we care about sustainable design? We believe that all design will be sustainable design in the future, um, whether through uh, consumer demand or through legislation. More consumers really want to have greener products if they had a choice. But this really is a new and unfamiliar challenge for businesses, so we want to see if we can help you through this uh, process and help you build this into a strategy for your sales and business success. So first of all, we want to talk about SOLIDWORKS sustainability. We want to make sure that it's easy to understand for all of our engineers. So what SOLIDWORKS sustainability does is it does a life cycle assessment of your product whether it be a part or an assembly. From the raw material extraction process all the way through the end of life. And it looks at four factors in each of those steps in that life cycle. It looks at the carbon footprint, total energy consumption, air acidification, and water eutrophication, meaning algae blooms um, in the water. So let's get into a quick demonstration of this inside of SOLIDWORKS. Here is the personal humidifier in which I alluded to. And you'll notice that we have the sustainability task pane loaded on the right hand side of our screen. This is accessed in the evaluate toolbar by launching the sustainability button. You'll also notice that it gives us a map showing where we are in the world and where we're going to manufacture this product. We'll manufacture it in Asia. We're going to ship it via boat to North America and we're going to tell it that we're going to be using electricity to power this device and it uses 0 0.01 kilowatt hours of electricity. At the bottom you can see the four environmental factors. What we want to do is look at this design through the assembly visualization capability of SOLIDWORKS. And you'll notice that it's showing us um, in colors loaded on the screen what parts have a higher environmental impact than others. The parts in red and the parts in yellow. And I can go into each of these parts and interrogate them. So if I select the water tank for example, I can see that it's made of polyethylene, a low and medium density uh, polyethylene in this case. And what I might want to consider doing, let's go ahead and open up the part by itself, you'll notice that we have uh, more factors that we can look at. In this case, we're going to tell it that it's an injection molded design and that we're actually going to do the injection molding in Asia and use it in North America. So what happens if we change our uh, material, in this case, to something that might make it uh, less of an environmental impact? How do we know? Well, this is the killer app inside of SOLIDWORKS Sustainability. Uh, we can choose the find similar material option and this will help us sort and find other suitable materials. So I want to look for plastics and I want to look for things that are of a similar density and say find similar. And it did a sort into my SOLIDWORKS material database. The SOLIDWORKS material database and sustainability characteristics are linked together. And the webcast that follows this uh, quick introduction into SOLIDWORKS sustainability, I get into more detail about this process. In this case, I'm going to select something that makes a bit more sense for the environment, 
but also makes sense for my um, my actual uh, SolidWorks uh, manufacturable design. In this case, I'm going to choose polypropylene homopolymer, and I can see down at the bottom that the environmental impact is much less uh, if I use this material. I accept it. I set the material, and my parameters down at the bottom of the screen have also updated. Now let's make sure that this can actually survive um, the loading conditions. So I'm going to use SolidWorks Sustainability. You see my material is automatically up to date. I've restrained this part in such a way so it will perform as it would in real life. I've applied a force as if somebody were to lean on top of the personal humidifier. And I've applied water pressure uh, to the inside bases. All I have to do is hit the Run button and SolidWorks will remesh this part and uh, run the calculations to show us the stresses, displacements, and the factor of safety involved in our design. And it has uh, just finished while we were speaking. And here are the stresses, displacements. So obviously at the top it's going to bow in a little bit more, but it's only a quarter millimeter. Let's look at our factor of safety. We have a factor of safety minimum of 5.1. So we really kind of over-designed this a little bit based on this material. I could probably even reduce the material now. Go into my uh, SolidWorks uh, design tree now and edit that shell feature. Right now it's a thickness of 2.5 millimeters. I'll make it 1.5. Let's see what happens. So everything updates there. All I have to do is rerun the analysis. You can see it's meshing right now. And now it's going to rerun the study. You can get details of this as it's running, but it really doesn't take very long. As you can see, it's already finished. Um, here are our stress results. Displacements, now we have uh, 3 quarters of a millimeter bowing in the top, which would still be fine. And a factor of safety of 2.13, which is still suitable for uh, consumer product design. We're not, uh, you know, this isn't an aerospace component, so a factor of safety of 2 should be uh, quite fine for this product. And then I can go back to my uh, top level assembly now. and everything will be up to date. The next thing I want to do just to finally uh, you know, share, I want to share this information with uh, my colleagues is I want to hit the generate report button. So simply by choosing the generate report button at the bottom of the screen, it will launch Microsoft Word from a template of my choice and show me um, the environmental impact factors in more detail in a format that I can share with my design team or with my customers. And let me just drag it over to the other screen here. I have dual monitors going. And there it is. It shows me my manufacturing region, my use region, environmental impact factors, and links to the SOLIDWORKS website, which show me what these parameters mean in um, layman's terms, if you will. Let's go ahead and check this into my Enterprise PDM Vault and save the document with the up-to-date changes inside of SolidWorks as well. So definitely check out the full video webcast, which is about uh, 45 minutes, which is a more in-depth discussion on this topic. Uh, my colleague Siobhan is also doing a study um, with one of our customers at the moment uh, Northern Power in Vermont, and he's going to be able to uh, talk about um, a real-life example of how uh, wind turbines and solar sustainability um, will work as well. So definitely look out for that in the next couple of